Firefly just released their State of IAC report for 2025. What did they discover and what jumped out to me? That's what we'll cover in this video. Hey everyone, welcome to another Terraform Tuesday. I'm Ned Bellavance, nedinthecloud.com, and today, I thought we could step back from the Terraform deep dives and talk about IAC as a whole. Where are we today? Where are things headed? What does it mean for you? First of all, big thanks to Firefly for sponsoring this video and for producing the report. Sponsorship helps keep this channel going, and I appreciate that they asked me to do an episode that doesn't focus on them, but rather on the IAC community as a whole. Thanks, Firefly. For starters, what is this report? Well, this is the third year Firefly has produced the State of Infrastructure as Code report, where they polled hundreds of IT professionals on how they're leveraging infrastructure as code in their environment. You can download a copy today at the link that's down in the description and form your own impressions, but here are the things that jumped out to me. There's little doubt at this point that adopting infrastructure as code is critical to your success in a modern operating environment. 89% of organizations are using IAC, a figure that has risen every year they've done this report. But that doesn't mean that folks have universally adopted IAC for all existing environments, as only 6% of respondents had all of their infrastructure codified. Now, I'll be the first to say that 100% codifying infrastructure is, it's hard. Some of that is a chicken or the egg type problem. How do you build out the infrastructure that manages your infrastructure as code that manages your infrastructure? Do you use Terraform to create the S3 buckets that hold your Terraform state? And if so, where do you store the state for the Terraform that creates those S3 buckets? Or do you use CloudFormation for that piece? Or just set it all up in the AWS console? Do you use infrastructure's code to create the pipelines in GitHub or to manage your repositories? Do you even consider that to be infrastructure? With all these questions swirling around, 100% codification might not be as important as just knowing what you have and deciding what is worth codifying, a point which I'll come back to later. Since adoption of infrastructure's code and cloud occurred organically over time, it is wildly inconsistent even within a single organization. 68% of respondents said they are running across multiple cloud providers, and more importantly, 57% of them are using two or more IAC frameworks. Now that multi-cloud thing is hardly surprising, and I suspect the 68% number is probably a little on the low side, for example, HashiCorp's State of Cloud Strategy report from last year put the number at 79% of respondents doing multi-cloud, and every other report I've seen puts it somewhere around that general number. Given that each cloud has its own bespoke native IAC framework, it's not terribly surprising that most organizations are using two or more IAC frameworks probably starting out with that native IAC framework and then later adopting something like OpenTofu or Terraform. Firefly's own data shows that CloudFormation is still in heavy, albeit declining use. And I'm guessing there's more than a few bicep and arm template users, users out there. You masochists with your arm templates. One thing that most respondents agreed on is that despite IAC and cloud becoming more mature, they're not getting any easier to manage. 92% of folks surveyed felt that cloud is as difficult or more difficult to manage than it was two years ago. I agree. And if I could posit why I think that might be, it probably has to do with the constant creep of new services and features being rolled out to all the different clouds and the introduction of newer technologies. The thing about the march of progress in tech is that very few things are ever truly retired. Mainframes, COBOL, heck, even fax machines are still lingering about while we're at the same time adopting the latest and greatest cloud-native AI-powered whiz-bang solution. As an IT professional or a DevOps engineer, 
you are always tasked to manage more things with the same amount of time and resources, maybe less, which means constantly finding ways to be more efficient and skill up your expertise. In fact, the top challenges of managing this vast cloud real estate are increases in complexity and the attendant knowledge that's required, time needed to manage things, the cost of it all, and the inherent security risks. The only way to stay ahead of the curve is to leverage automation solutions that make you, the practitioner, more effective at your job, allowing you to perform at scale. How are respondents handling this increased burden? Well, for one thing, IAC adoption is at 89%. So clearly one of the strategies for becoming more efficient is to embrace infrastructure as code. And what type of IAC is most favored? Right now, Terraform is still king of the hill with over 60% of respondents using it today or planning to use it in the next year. What about Open Tofu? It continues to make inroads against Terraform as it is the simplest migration path with 12% of folks using it today and 27% planning to adopt it in the next year. While Terraform and Open Tofu are separate projects, they share a common lineage and compatibility that makes, in, makes moving from one to the other, it's fairly trivial. And both are cloud agnostic by nature, which I think is especially critical for those 68% of orgs that are running multi-cloud. Two other IAC frameworks that have noticeable potential for growth are Pulumi and Crossplane, with respondents claiming they are looking to use each in the near future. While both of them are multi-cloud in nature, the migration path from Terraform is much more complicated than moving to open tofu, and it requires something beyond just knowing some HCL and how the cloud works. So for the time being, I think those will stay niche products. On the automation front, it looks like most folks are using CI-CD pipelines and GitOps workflows to manage their IAC, and that's very much in line with my experience. Anytime I run a poll on LinkedIn to see what people are using to automate IAC, the vast majority are using some generic CI CD platform like GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps pipelines to manage their infrastructure's code and not one of the bespoke Terraform automation platforms. That being said, number two in the automation list is HCP Terraform slash Terraform Enterprise, which I didn't expect. Seems like most folks are opting to use HashiCorp's paid solution to manage their infrastructure's code with manual CLI and then third-party IAC management solutions finishing out the pack. I'm curious to see if this shifts year over year going forward. What has changed year over year is the use of the manual CLI, dropping down from 30% to 24%. Folks know they have to adopt automation to drive their IAC, and they're mostly doing, with, doing it with existing CI CD tooling. Once you've got the code and the automation, what else can you do to rise to the challenge? Well, it is 2025, so the answer has to be AI, right? Well, slow your roll there, partner. The report found that no one is using AI ops to fully manage their infrastructure today. It is simply too early in the product lifecycle, and AI has not built up sufficient trust. So what are practitioners using AI for? The two big categories are code generation and cost optimization, with 17% of teams already using AI for that purpose. And that correlates to my own experience. GitHub Copilot, especially with Claude Sonnet, has made generating IAC code much quicker. When I need to start building something with Terraform today, I usually start by asking Copilot to build out the initial files and configuration. It becomes more of a pair programming exercise where Copilot is doing a lot of the grunt work and I'm leveraging my experience to improve and tweak the code. There is still much room for improvement, with Copilot occasionally hallucinating resource types and arguments for providers, and a few times just making up providers that don't actually exist. It also doesn't know my standards for how I like to structure my IAC, and it doesn't really check itself for security and compliance concerns. At this point, a human still needs to be in the loop, 
But as these tools improve and things like MCP become available to augment existing models, I think widespread adoption of AI for code generation is inevitable. Where I would look for AI to help out next is in management of existing infrastructure. Through AI ops tools that bring visibility and insight into the environments you're managing. That's especially true for the category of drift, which has become a major concern for folks. There's three kinds of drift that folks need to deal with. First, you have out of bound changes to managed infrastructure that need to be kept in place. That requires detecting the drift and updating your code to match the change. Then you have unauthorized changes to managed infrastructure that should be remediated, which also requires detecting the drift and then reverting it to what's in the code. Then finally, you have deployments of unmanaged infrastructure that needs to be detected, codified, and brought under management. Unfortunately, most people are only dealing with the first two types of drift, and even then, they're doing so reactively through manual processes. Less than a third of respondents have a process for automatically detecting drift and remediating it, with 17% having no drift management in place at all. And of those that do, 40% say it takes days or weeks to get it fixed. Drift can lead to inconsistent environments, potential security issues, cost overruns, and possible compliance violations. Your infrastructure as code is supposed to be the source of truth. But if you don't deal with drift, then it no longer is. And the longer you allow your infrastructure to drift, the more painful the remediation process will become. I think as you prepare a plan for 2025 and beyond, drift detection is one area that you should focus on. In fact, let's review my top three things to focus on for IAC in the next year. Looking at the study, the top three benefits of IAC are consistency, reliability, and velocity. Now that's nothing new, and it's certainly achievable. To get there, I think there's three big areas to focus on for 2025. First, it's time to integrate visibility across your infrastructure pipelines. The majority of organizations are automating IAC deployments with CI-CD tools today. But how many of them have a holistic view of all the environments being managed by infrastructure's code and the dependencies and interactions between those environments? If you make a change in one, do you end up breaking something in another one? Hmm, how do you know? I would look for a solution that meets you where you are in terms of your automation and helps you gain a big picture understanding of what you're managing today. You know who would really appreciate that holistic view? your platform team. You've thought about building one of those, right? Platform teams might not be right for every organization, but if you're worried about consistency, reliability, and velocity, they are a great place to start. Platform teams help develop IAC code that is reusable and consistent across the entire organization. They help enshrine best practices, roll out automation templates, and increase IAC adoption. Platform teams can evaluate new services, develop new standards, and test out new tools to see what works best for you. If you don't already have a platform team, 2025 is a great year to start. Many of the tools that your platform team, once you have one, is going to evaluate are going to be AI related. The AI space is rapidly evolving and the introduction of the Model Context Protocol MCP, and agent-to-agent, -agent, A2A, is going to make AI agents far more capable and powerful. That doesn't mean AI is going to replace you. What it's going to do is make you more effective and help you combat the extreme complexity of the modern cloud. AI can help you focus on the why and the what without worrying as much about the how. But you do have to keep an eye on the how as it changes and evolves. Infrastructure's code is still a fledgling technology that's slowly maturing and evolving in terms of both standards and practices. Firefly's State of Infrastructure's Code report shows that we, as an industry, have made great strides in adopting and automating IAC, 
but there's still plenty of room for improvement. I appreciate the insights that the report provided and the moment it gave me to reflect on where we've been and where we're going. Like I said, you can get your own copy of the report at the link down below. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts once you've read it. Does the report line up with your own experience? What are your plans regarding Terraform and Open Tofu? Was there something missing that you felt should have been included? Let me know down in the comments or hit me up on LinkedIn. Thanks again to Firefly for sponsoring this video and thanks to you, dear viewer, for tuning in. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on.